Southview students. It is the week of March 15th. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now it's time for the Avid Spartan Pledge. I am an avid Spartan, always prepared for the day, very respectful to all that come my way, intentionally safe and determined to exceed. I am an avid Spartan and today I will succeed. Avid job highlight. This week's avid job highlight is advertising copywriter. Advertising copywriters develop content used to market and promote goods and services. They write ads, jingles, slogans, featured in magazines, television commercials, and other media outlets. The advertising world is a fast-paced environment, and advertising copywriters produce under tight deadlines. Some copywriters work as freelancers for a variety of advertising firms while others work in-house for just one company. Advertising copywriters can advance to positions such as communication specialist or creative director. Today, most copywriters work for digital publications, in addition to advertising companies and companies that produce a wide range of goods. To be a successful copywriter, you will need to be able to create tailor-made content with appropriate tone, grammar, and message for a variety of potential clients. The degree that you need to become an advertising copywriter is a bachelor's degree in communications, English, or marketing. Some of the required skills to be an advertising copywriter is the ability to work under strict deadlines, good writing skills, creativity, and persuasiveness. And having a healthy imagination can be a big asset as well. Classes you are taking now that can help you as a copywriter include Project Lead the Way. Lots of projects in Project Lead the Way require a pitch on what you're going to do. That is a big part of advertising. Also, band and chorus can really help with the music side of advertising, such as jingles, like Avid Job Highlight. Visual is a big part of advertising, so make sure you're paying attention in art class too. And of course, language arts. You need to have that good grammar. You need to be able to write creatively. There are a lot of things you'll need, so make sure you're paying attention in language arts as well. Colleges that can help you become an advertising copywriter include Danville Area Community College, University of Illinois, Eastern Illinois University, and Oakland Community College. Black History Facts. We recently celebrated the amazing women in our lives. Today I'm going to talk about the very first African American woman representative. Shirley Chrisholm was the first African American woman elected to the House of Representatives. She was elected in 1968 and represented the state of New York. She broke ground again four years later in 1972 when she became the first major party African American candidate and the first female candidate for President of the United States. Let's do our best to honor her contribution to our history. I have an announcement for you. This coming Friday, there will be a textbook distribution. It'll be from 10 to 11 and 12.30 to 1.30. Be sure to swing by to pick up your textbooks. Teacher Spotlight, take it away, Mrs. Densing. Okay, welcome to the Teacher Spotlight of the week. And this week, we are gonna be talking to Mrs. Day. So, Mrs. Day, yes. where did you grow up and where did you go to school? Okay, so I grew up in Danville. Um, I've lived here all my life. I am the youngest of five kids. We all went to Holy Family grade school, and then I went to Schlarman High School. I did have a brother that went to Danville. But yeah, I've lived here my whole life. So tell us a little bit about your track of college and okay. your career. Well, this is kind of um, interesting. And it's funny because it sounds like Sierra and myself had kind of the same situation. So I always told my parents that I wanted to be a nurse and I didn't really know much about nursing other than you married a doctor. So I thought that would be cool. So when it came time to go to nursing school, I went to nursing school and here in town at Lakeview College of Nursing. And I realized that emotionally, if I had patients that passed away, I realized there was no way I could handle that. I didn't have a problem with the science. I loved it, but I just couldn't handle the thought of somebody that got really sick and died when I was trying to take care of them. So I quit school and I started working. I had like three jobs at the time. And one of my jobs was at a daycare. So when I was at that daycare, I decided, you know, I really loved kids and I loved being around kids. So I thought, okay, well, I need to go back to school to be a teacher. So that's what I did. And I went to Eastern for my undergrad and then I got my master's degree at Olivet. Okay. 
Very interesting. Yeah, Miss Baker decided that was the path she would follow too. So your pets, you had told me that your mom always let you have pets. So yes. what were some pets that your mom let you have? Well, my very first pet I had was a guinea pig. Actually, I had two guinea pigs. I got them from my sixth grade teacher, and I believe I was in the fourth grade. And one guinea pig's name was Spike, and the other one was I named Baby. And I had them for probably, oh gosh, not very long. I want to say maybe less than a year. And I didn't realize guinea pigs... Their lifespan is not very long, unfortunately. So I lost both my guinea pigs. My mom even let me stay home from school one day when when Spike died because I was so upset. So I, I started with the love of animals when I was really young. Those two guinea pigs were my, my first personal pets. So tell me a little bit about the pets you've got now. Well, my husband and I, we like cats. We've had several cats. Right now I have two black cats. One's name is Boo. We found him around Halloween and we've had him for probably about 12 years. And then the other one, Dexter, he's also all black. And we got him from a friend of ours that they found him in a bag on the side of the road with another cat, Kitten, and we rescued him. And he's just the sweetest thing ever. Oh, I just think animals that are rescued just are so much happier. Well, yeah, and I think those are the best to be rescued. Yeah, they're always so thankful. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit like what you like to do in your spare time. In my spare time, I really like to hang out with friends and, and be with family. I had a brother that passed away just about a year and a half ago that I spent a lot of time with because he was sick. So I was at the nursing home with him a lot. I love to cook. I enjoy going on vacations. I like going to different restaurants and trying different food. I just like to do things that are relaxing. And, and you are a very good cook, and I know that. Oh, for a fact. Thank you very okay. much, Ms. Dunsing. So what is your quote that you'd like to share with the students? Okay, so my quote that I would like to share, I had a hard time coming up with one, but actually my husband said this, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's the best quote I've heard. And it's, it doesn't cost anything to dream. And the reason why I think when he said that, I thought, oh my gosh, that's the perfect one. It's because when I was growing up, my mom never ever made us feel like we couldn't do something. If we, if we worked hard, if we did our best, that we could accomplish anything. And I feel like kids nowadays, especially in the kind of situation we're in, everybody's been cooped up and maybe a little bit sad. So I feel like now is the time that people really need to, to think about what is it that I want to do. And it doesn't cost anything. You can think about anything and then you just got to put your mind to it. Very inspirational. So thank you so very much for being in the teacher spotlight this week, Mrs. Day. I really appreciate well, your time and I'm Sure, everybody will enjoy that. Thank you for being on our show, Miss Day. I love that quote. And thank you, Mrs. Dunsing, for hosting as always. Time for the special day of the week. Ever feel jet lagged right after daylight savings? March 15th is National Napping Day, and it is the perfect day to help you recuperate from your spring forward. Please don't doze off as soon as I tell you this. I promise this won't be a snooze fest. Napping is actually scientifically proven to be better for you than coffee or energy drinks. So now you can feel less guilty about enjoying a not so guilty pleasure. You may have lost that extra hour in your day, but you can feel like you've caught up on some of your sleep by celebrating the day in style. Time for the joke of the week. Did you know that it is illegal for children of police officers to refuse to take naps? They would be guilty of resisting a rest. <laughs> Time for a question for you. Which ancient civilization would regularly take naps in the hottest part of the afternoon? Have your teacher email me your answer. Miss Fidel's class and Miss Keene's class are giving everyone a run for their money. They've gotten the answer right almost every week. In addition to that, I also want to shout out my own class because they also got it right. The famous mathematician whose birthday is on Pi Day is Albert Einstein. I'm going to leave you with one last word. Willowa. A willowa is a noun which means a sudden violent gust of cold land air common among mountainous coasts of high latitudes. One time I climbed to the top of a lighthouse and there was quite a willowa that rushed through. I had to hold on for dear life. Mr. Hubbard, and I'll see you next week.